Good Monday morning. Well, this morning I got a message from Jesus. It's actually a message I got yesterday, and it's about the joy of the resurrection, and especially the joy on a Sunday. So here goes. My children, today is the day of the resurrection, the greatest event in human history, and also the most powerful day upon which I resurrected from the dead, manifesting my victory over death, not just for me, but for the entire human race, including each and every one of you. Through your baptism, my children, you are directly connected to the same power that rose me from the dead, a supernatural power that can utterly transform your lives on earth. Yet, my children, so very many of you have absolutely no joy at all on a Sunday and are even more miserable and sin more than any other day. How very sad, my children. This makes my heart. And yet many of you are not to blame. Your own religious education was so poor and so desperately lacking in love that it has damaged your relationship with me for life. How I desire to change this and for you to see me in a different light. I am not the angry or boring God that you may have learnt of, but rather I am the God of love and life. My children, read the Gospels for yourselves, and therein you will see my personality and love for sinners. I desire that each person comes to an individual and personal connection with me, and that each individual experiences my love for themselves. Yes, my children, I repeat, everyone without exception. Come, my children, come to get to know me with your hearts. And I will give you such joy that every Sunday you will skip to the Mass to receive me in the Eucharist. Well, what to say, only an extremely loving, compassionate, kind message from Jesus. It is true, it's easy to look around in, on a Sunday and to look at people's faces and people's body language and to think, gosh, people really don't want to be there. Even we know that Mass attendance at this stage is way down. But even the people that do go to Mass, sometimes we look around and they can seem so miserable. And yet Jesus, even though he's sad about it, he's not blaming the people. And that's, you see, the beautiful thing about Jesus. And that's why Our Lady of Medjugorje as well, when she speaks of people that don't believe in Jesus, whatever, she speaks of people who have not yet experienced the love of God. So in other words, she speaks about them with such compassion they may not have yet had that experience of grace that has allowed them to convert. And so Jesus says, Yet, my children, so very many of you have absolutely no joy at all on a Sunday and are even more miserable and sin more than other days. Now, we might wonder why. Well, I suppose because Sunday is the day of recreation. And if we don't have God in our lives, then recreation will probably involve eating too much, drinking too much, talking too much, gossiping too much, and basically doing a bit of everything too much. And yet Jesus says that he is desperately seeking that our relationship with him will change. How I desire to change this and for you to see me in a different light. Your own religious education was so poor and so desperately lacking in love that it has damaged your relationship with me for life. And I think so very many of us can relate to that, and I certainly can. Because even in my own life, when I began to experience the Holy Spirit, and when I told my parents, who were very ordinary, good Mass-going Catholics, they would have never missed Mass on a Sunday, we were serving at Mass, I was reading at Mass, grew up as Catholic as you could be. And yet when I had an experience of the Holy Spirit, they couldn't understand at all, they thought I'd lost my mind. And when I started telling them about the love of Jesus and the mercy of Jesus, but not just about it, that I was experiencing it, they couldn't take it in. They thought I had had gone mad. And yet how sad this makes Jesus, because Jesus is now saying that I desire each person to come to an individual and personal connection with me, and that each individual experiences my love for themselves. In other words, He doesn't just want me or a few other people out there that have these big conversions to experience his love. He wants every single person, every single soul to experience his love. And he wants, if you like, the tables to turn. He wants people to be surprised if they're not experiencing his love, not to be surprised if they are. 
And you see, when we experience Jesus' love, when we experience his mercy, when we experience his personality, well then we experience the power of the Eucharist and the gospel becomes alive. And then he says at the end, he says, I will give you such joy that you will skip to Mass to receive me in the Eucharist. Imagine you will be delighting, you won't be able to wait to get to Mass wondering what mystical graces and what love Jesus is going to pour into your heart and what he's going to do in your life. And yet Jesus is not blaming people at all. And yet he does say that he calls people to reading the Gospels. Because when we read the Gospels, I can't find it now, but when we read the Gospels we find, yes my children, read the Gospels for yourselves and therein you will see my personality and love for sinners. In other words, sometimes we've been taught so much about Jesus from a head place that we haven't had that time or made the time perhaps, I don't know, to develop the personal connection. And when we do that, basically everything changes. We realize that Jesus isn't the goody goody two shoes or Jesus isn't the person at all he was made out to be in a religious education. And actually Jesus has a burning, thirsting love for sinners, for us. And he also says as well, the considered on the day of the resurrection is the greatest event in human history and the most powerful day he resurrected from the dead, manifesting my victory over death. But this is the important thing, not just for himself. So I'm just looking at the tele television for something, but not just for himself, but also for each and every one of us. And not this old school Catholicism of, oh, well, whoopee you do we're saved and we'll go to heaven. But in the meantime, we have to trudge on down here and we have to uh, live down here. No, he says that through our baptism, through your baptism, you are directly connected to the same power that rose me from the dead. A supernatural power that can utterly transform your lives on earth. In other words, it's not just about getting to heaven. Heaven is crossing the finish line, but it's also about running the race and basically loving Jesus also while we're on earth. But loving Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit and through this supernatural power basically that empowers us, that gives us, and it's the Holy Spirit, if you like, he's like the, the mobile phone. The Holy Spirit is the mobile phone to heaven that connects us directly with heaven. And so through the mobile phone, or through the Holy Spirit, I should say, but through the connection, we can experience the love of God. Without the Holy Spirit, we can think about God, we can write a book about God, but we're not experiencing him. But when we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit allows us to touch, to taste, to see, to download, if you like, into our hearts, this love that we might know about already intellectually. And this love, as I was saying, is not just some airy-fairy love that will get us to heaven. This love is something that also can transform our lives on earth. It can fill us with joy, with happiness, with zeal, with faith, with miracles, with healings, with deliverances, with all sorts of supernatural manifestations of the Holy Spirit, with evangelization, with compassion, with forgiveness, with inner healing, physical healings, all sorts of stuff, praise and worship, joy, all the sorts of wonderful things we see especially we see in charismatic type circles. And so Jesus is absolutely bursting and thirsting that the church will become absolutely chock block full of people who know him, who experience him, him and who, upon whom he wants to pour out the Holy Spirit with more gifts, more charisms, more love, more zeal, more enthusiasm, more evangelization, more, more, more. So that we will be skipping, skipping, he says, to Mass on a Sunday, not just saying, oh, what time is it on? Oh, I've got a hangover. Anyway, so on that note, let us pray. Let us sincerely pray and beg Jesus to open our hearts and that we want to experience him. Say, Jesus, it's not enough. I want to experience you. I want this. You died to give me this. I want it. Do what is necessary. I want to experience you. I want to love you. Heal my heart. Bring me to the right people. Transform my life, Jesus. I want to be set on fire to work for you, to live for you. I only live once down here. You're short of workers, here I am. So on that note, come Holy Spirit, come renew us, come inflame our hearts with the love for Jesus. Come give us wisdom, give us discernment, give us forgiveness, give us healing, give us zeal, give us power, give us faith, give us strength, and also give us a great love for Our Lady, our Mother, who will hold our hand through all the trials, through all the ups, through all the downs, and she will welcome us into paradise on that day when we do cross the line and when we do finish the race. So thanks for listening. Have a great week.